welcome once again out to Cliffdale's virtual Bible study. Thank you for being here with us, worshiping the Lord for um, just a few minutes and hanging out. Got a lot to share tonight. Uh, just some amazing things that God is doing. But before we jump into that, let's uh, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we love you. We worship you, Father. We we welcome you into this place. We say, have your way, have your way, O oh God. We declare our love for you. We declare that you are good, that you are great, and you are greatly to be praised. That in all the heavens and in all the earth, there is none like you. <laughs> for you are a great and mighty God. You are awesome. You're worthy of praise. You're worthy of glory. You're worthy of honor, God. You are so good. Come on right there where you're at. Just declare your love to the Lord. How we love you. How we love you. How we love you, God. How we love you. For you are great and greatly to be praised. And we love you. We love you. We love you. Oh, how we love you. How we love you. How we love you. right now heavenly father we just lay aside every care and every worry every concern father everything that would try to exalt itself against the knowledge of you we break the power of that thing in our life heavenly father for every sin every shame and all guilt right now we just repent oh god we say come and cleanse and wash and purify our lives so that we more it might enter into the presence of our god our king our lord our heavenly heavenly father yeah god yeah, 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 Father. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. You are great and you are awesome. You are good, you are good, you are good, you are good, God. We say, take us and use us, O oh God. God, let your glory be displayed on the inside of us that we might honor, we might glorify. God, let us reflect what it is to be good, to be godly. Let us reflect, God, your characteristics, I pray. teach, lead, and guide us into your will, into your word, and into your ways. We love you, Lord, and we bless you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Woo, well, right there where you're at, give somebody a high five, give them a handshake, tell them it's good to see them at home tonight. <laughs> yeah, woo, good stuff. Welcome out. And um, thanks for joining us for our weekly Bible study. Well, hello once again. Here we go. Uh, a few announcements real quick. Um, number one, uh, every Saturday between 11 and 1 o'clock, if you'd like to volunteer, be a part of those giveaways. You can talk to Ms. Barbara Wilson. We'd love to see you come out and help us. Uh, keep in mind that as we are doing these things, we are adhering to all of the guidelines that the CDC, uh, the World Health Organization, our president, governor, even our local mayor, the, uh, the, the recommendations that they have made, uh, wearing masks, gloves, all of those things. People don't come in. They simply um, 
a drive through we hand them the food and they drive away i got to give a just a huge shout out to our uh, our outreach team because man what a great job they did this past week they had a little bit of leftovers and so they brought over to me some uh, carolina barbecue and um yeah it was great just i mean what a f potato salad salad you know rolls just just delicious great and uh what an opportunity to uh, to be able to continue to invest in the people in our community also miss judy her and George and the food bank doing a phenomenal job. They're open um, between five and six every Wednesday if you're in need. Uh, now, that is not prepared. It's not cooked food, um, but it's, uh, you know, regular groceries, bread, canned goods, things like that. Uh, if you're an individual who is in need, make sure you stop by on Wednesday between five and six, and um, you can pick up some groceries because, and these are going to be ongoing things that we try to continue to do. We also welcome you to come out this Sunday for our resurrection, our virtual resurrection <laughs> church service. Um, but come out and be a part of that. It will kick off at 10. But before that, at 930, we will be, of course, doing our Little Bit Branches Children's Ministry. I um, want to give, again, just huge props to uh, Pastor Brian and Angie Kristoff, uh, Miss Miranda, for getting those things together and putting this stuff together and getting it out to the kids here at Cliffdale so that they might continue to grow and learn and, I mean, even win tickets, right, kids? So, uh, yeah, good stuff. Let's see what um, continue to check in on our daily devos. Um, every day I am going through our devotional uh, with you. At that time, I'm taking things like prayer requests, testimonies, questions. Um, if you have a prayer request, I ask that you put it in the comments section. Um, also, if you have a prayer request, I'm asking that you put that also in the comments section. Um, so, yeah, so that we can be, uh, yeah, just continue to uh, keep you up to date on the things that are going on. Uh, if you're a part of the MOH here uh, at Cliffdale, you can also know that we are in the midst of putting together a ministry of helps, um, uh, uh, teaching, and time. This past Sunday, I met with all the pastors via Zoom and was able to touch base with them, had a great, wonderful, powerful pastors meeting. Um, and now I'm looking for a way to be able to, and a time to be able to, via Zoom, um, be able to meet with all of our ministry of helps. Uh, look, we're doing what we got to do because I want to continue to uh, keep the connection and uh, stay up with everybody and how they're doing and continue to um, pour in the leadership things, the principles and leadership, principles of the kingdom that the Father has given to me. I want to be able to continue to pour those out and pour them into you. Um, go ahead and prepare your tithes and offerings. And while you're doing that, um, know that if you uh, if you want to give, I want to be able to give these instructions to you. You can tithe number one on our website. Um, we're going to show an instructional video in just a moment on how to do that. That's at Cliffdale, or www.cliffdalealive.com. Um, you can text to give if you dial 910-499-4749. I'm going to sound like an infomercial now. That's 910-499-4749. Uh, you can text to give. Just follow the prompts with that. You can mail your checks to Cliffdale Christian Center at 6427 Cliffdale Road, Fayetteville, North Carolina, 28314. And finally, last but not least, you can drop those tithes off at our preschool at building number five to Miss Barbara Wilson, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. I think that's all of the announcements for now. Go ahead and let's watch this tutorial video on how to give on our website. So now we know how to give. Um, of course, we know we've been speaking and talking about how Paul mentioned us or, or, or encourages us to be that cheerful giver. As you know, here at Team Cliffdale, at our tribe, our crew, um, we are in the season of first fruit giving. As we look forward to um, Passover, as we are now celebrating Holy Week, um, this is our season of first fruit giving. And so if you have your tithes, your offerings, we encourage you in just a moment to give those, but also if you have your first fruit gift. Now, we do ask that you earmark that first fruit gift so that we are able to put that aside towards our first fruit. We kind of got a, a first fruit savings um, that we're putting aside so all of those finances can go into refurbishing our log building. So we ask if you are going to give first fruits, you just make sure that you make note of that. Um, when you give. Go ahead and just take that gift, lift it up to the Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I speak a blessing over each giver 
this evening. That, Father, you would take their gift, that you would use their gift, that, God, you would be glorified in their gift, and, Father, that they would have a testimony from that gift. That, Father, even as they give, that you will give back to them, press down, shaken together, running over, oh God, will they just, they'll just overflow with the blessing, even in this season of difficulty and hardship, even in this season of uh, uh, pandemic, Father, even as they uh, give in faith that, Father, they will see a fruitful result, that, God, they will not just simply survive in the midst of this thing, but, God, they would thrive in the midst of it. I speak a blessing, God, just that they would walk that thing out in faith, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Um, you know, guys, I almost said right there, uh, go ahead and bring your tithes and offerings forward, um, but you're not going to be able to do that from home. Uh, let's go ahead and open up uh, our word tonight. Hallelujah. You know, of course, here we are in Holy Week. Uh, turn in your Bibles while I'm talking to uh, Luke chapter 22. Um, the time of year when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus um, we really cultivate, discuss, and uh, talk about, um, uh, uh, unpack what that death, burial, resurrection, what this last week of Jesus' earthly ministry, and I don't even know if that's actually true. Is it, was it really his last week? Um, I don't think so, because after the three days, he rose from the dead, and then he spent the next 40 days with his disciples, with his followers, with his, um, th those who were around about him. And then finally, after 40 days, uh, you know, he ascended up into heaven and uh, sent the Holy Spirit 10 days after that on the day of Pentecost. So what we're doing, um, I'm actually working on right now the devotional for that, that that will be distributed next week. And it's called Pathway to Pentecost as we aim towards the day of Pentecost, the, the giving of the promise, the giving of the Holy Spirit. Um, this devotional will, will will bring us all the way through. It's going to be two parts, two volumes, 25 days each, and will bring us all the way into Pentecost and will bring us all the way into the execution of this pandemic, the time when it's over, it's done, and we have the victory. <clears throat> One thing I want to say, though, don't allow this time to be a time of mere survival in that how the victory is somewhere up there in the future when when these restrictions when they when they're when they're lifted off of us um take that victory for yours T take that victory today listen victory is not merely seeing um these restrictions lifted victory is something we can live in day in and day out in this season and i recommend i encourage i implore you in the name of jesus be living that victory out on a daily basis be looking for those creative ideas that god will give you ingenious ideas that you can begin to walk in, live in, especially, guys, Team Cliffdale, hear me, especially in this time of first fruits. Let us be taking hold. Let us be seizing every moment that we are living in for the glory of our Heavenly Father. We are being given such opportunity to see kingdom expansion in this time, in this day. Listen, the world is afraid. The world is worried. The world is scared. The world feels shut in. They feel depressed. They feel broken. Hear me, church. Hear me. This is the time for us to arise and declare no need to fear, no need to doubt, no need to worry because God is still on the throne. Jesus still died and saved us from our sins and the Holy Spirit still partners with us today as our comforter, as our friend. Mm. Let's read Luke chapter 22. I'm going to begin reading in verse 39, and we're going to read uh, from verse 39 through 51. It says, Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, as was his custom, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw away, and he knelt down and he prayed, saying, Father, if it be your will to take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Verse 43, then an angel appeared to him from heaven and strengthened him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from the prayer, he had come back to his disciples and he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. <laughs> ah. And while he was still there speaking, behold, a multitude, and he, uh, who, and he who was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before him, 
drew near to Jesus and kissed him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, you are betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Hmm. And when those around him saw it, what was going to happen, they said to him, Lord, shall we strike them down with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut his ear off. But Jesus answered and said, permit me even this. And he touched his ear and he was healed. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. God, as we um, walk this thing out, as we seize this moment of opportunity, God, let our, let our eyes be open to see that indeed this is opportune. It is an opportune time. Father, let us our ears be open to the reality that, that God, we, we, we right now in this season and in this time, Heavenly Father, let us hear your truth, let us see your truth, and let us seize this season. Let us seize this moment. Heavenly Father, that is our desire. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that each person watching, each person listening, God, I say, enable me to communicate your word effectively. Anoint me, Heavenly Father, to communicate your word with precision, mm, that lives might be changed, eyes might be open, hearts might be open to receive from your word, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, this past week, we, uh, we, 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 the scriptures we came from, Romans, um, or, well, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, first, and it says, I am determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Also from Romans chapter 1, where I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. Listen, we need to realize and come to the understanding that we have no need to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that that dunamis power, that there is dunamis power that brings us to the place of that sotore salvation. Listen, friends. If you did not or were not a part of this past Sunday's uh, time of preaching and teaching, I highly recommend go back, listen, watch it, um, because it's going to kind of uh, uh, direct us in the direction that we are going, the, the, that, that dunamis power, that satore, um, what it is that Jesus is when he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. These are the discussions and the talks that we're going to be talking about tonight, this evening. Um, and the reason is, is number one, the season that we're living in, and when I say that, I mean the resurrection season, this being Holy Week, what was purchased for us 2,000 years ago, just a, a, a few days hence, right? Um, the celebration of that resurrection, the celebration of that Passover, um, the, celebra the celebration of the death. Listen, without the death there, you would have never had the resurrection. Uh, you would never have had the ascension. You would never have the sending of the promise. A couple of weeks I talked about how this season, this moment has come to pass. And it is necessary that we realize that the things that have come to pass, number one, that they will pass, but also realize that they're necessary. We cannot enter into the season that God has for us unless we go through the season we are currently in. Jesus would not have ascended if he has, hadn't raised. He would not have raised had he uh, not been crucified and died. And again, this is the, the, the pathway backwards, uh, the, uh, the difficulty, the hardship, the beating, the nailing, the, um, the, the whipping, the pulling, bidding, all of these things were, were, was a, that had come past. They had a purpose, right? There was that moment in time they had a purpose that mu had to be accomplished in order for the next step to be made. I hope you grab that in this season. We are currently walking through this season, both the resurrection season and the pandemic season. And in order to get over here, right, in order to get there, we've got to begin here. There are steps that we have to be taking in order to get from point A to point B to point C. And I desire that in this season that we would be being a people who would realize, okay, God has me going somewhere. I may not know where that is. I know he's leading me step by step. He's taking me from faith to faith, from glory to glory, right? And I, I realize that. I recognize it. And so I'm going to continue to walk this faith walk out. And these steps right here are necessary for those steps right there. So I want us to seize this moment. I want us to seize this resurrection season. I want us to seize even this pandemic season. Listen, when the world is going. The world is being fearful. That is such an opportune time, friend, for the church to arrive. That moment. For the church to display, right here, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To display that gospel. For it is the power of God. It is the dunamis power of God unto salvation. Take hold 
of that dunamis power. Display that salvation. (laughs) Display what it is that Christ has done for us, the redemption that he has purchased for us. My friends, listen. In the beginning, God created. Uh, Through the act of faith, God spoke into existence the moon and the stars. He spoke into existence the seas and the ocean and the ground and the animals and the fish and the birds and the whales and uh, the planets. He spoke into existence. He ignited the sun. All of these things took place. And then his final, his what I'll call the pic de la resistance, right? The, the, the very pinnacle of his creation. He, he shaped and he formed mankind. He blew the breath of life into him. He said that it wasn't good that man would be alone. So he took from man a rib and made Eve, made female, made woman. And they lived in the garden, and I don't know how much time they spent in the garden, but at some point in time, the serpent came to deceive. He says to Eve, is it not possible for you to eat from every tree in the garden? And she says, no, we cannot eat from every tree. We can eat from all the trees except one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For if we eat of that tree or the day we touch it, we will surely die. You will not die. We know the story. Eve takes the fruit, she eats the fruit, she gives to Adam. Adam eats the fruit. God seeks Adam out in the garden in the cool of the day. Adam, where are you? Adam comes from his place of hiding. I hid from you, for I knew I was naked. How did you know that you were naked, Adam? Have you eaten from the fruit? And again, we've talked about this several times in the past week. Did you eat from the fruit? Well, and Adam doesn't even answer honestly. Really, he just says, it was the woman you gave me. And then the woman, what have you done? And he says, it was the serpent. This whole blame-throwing thing going on, instead of just falling on their knees and saying, God, forgive us. We, we did what we should have never have done. Instead of doing that, they, they blame shift, and they, 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 they take the, the, the weight of responsibility off of their shoulders, and they place it on somebody else's shoulders. And we see this, the, that, 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 that sin had entered into this perfect place, and God expels them from the garden. And understand that, that even in this, God is beginning a process. He's beginning to, did did God know that Adam was going to sin? Yes. Had God, uh, and I don't even want to say that God made uh, alternative plans, a plan B or plan Z, C, just in case Adam messed up. He knew that Adam was going to mess up. So he already had a plan A, and his plan A knew that Adam was going to sin. His plan A knew that he would choose Abram, that Abram would become Abraham, and he would give birth to Isaac and Jacob and create a nation. He knew that that nation would be brought into a place of slavery. But he would raise up a deliverer named Moses and that Moses would lead the people out of Egypt with many signs and many wonders. Did he? It was all part of the plan. He knew that even as they were out in the wilderness that he would begin to give Moses his law, that thing that would separate his people from the rest. His guidelines, his covenant. Moses comes down from the mountain and he sees the people, right, kneeling before the golden calf. And I, this story never ceases to amaze me. He takes the, the, the stone tablets that the hand, the finger of God had etched the commandments upon, and he crashes those among the people. He declares they needed to repent. He takes the golden calf and he beats it, right, into tiny little pieces, and he puts it in the water, and he makes the children of Israel drink from that water. It's like, Ur, see what you've done? How dare you? The people come to a place of repentance. They establish a covenant, um, they become that people group, but they, they're brought to the place where God was leading them. Again, keeping in mind, this is not a plan C, D, E, F, or G. This is still plan A that began in the garden. It brings them, they come to the edge of the place, and they send 12 spies into it. Ten spies come back and say, there's no way we can ever win. Uh, they're, 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 these individuals are like giants, and we're like giants, and they're, or, uh, they're like giants in our eyes, and we're like crickets you know, in their eyes, you know, and so uh, they, they, they flee, they run away. <laughs> and then they make the decision, you know, they, 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 they uh, scare all the people. All the people say we can't win. And then Moses once again rebukes them. After Moses rebukes them, he says, now that because you've done this, you will spend 40 years. There's not one of you that will enter in to this land that flows with milk and honey. Upon these harsh words, they repent and they say, well, we're going to go in now. And Moses says, no, because now God's not going to be with you. But yet in their rebellion, right, what do they do? They go in and they get beat. Finally, they head out to the wilderness. Forty years, 40 years wandering. 
40 years learning, growing, 40 years of, um, uh, I'll say, process taking place. And in this time, God continued to provide food. He continued uh, for their clothes not to wear out and their shoes not to get holes. God continued to provide even in that time in the wilderness. Listen, the time in which we live is much, it's very similar to, to that time in the wilderness. This time of fear and pandemic and wondering, right, what's going on and the things that are taking place. But let us know this, that God is continuing to provide for us. If we will reach out and take hold of those opportunities, he will continue to pour out and he will continue to bless. We know this takes place 40 years out in the wilderness. Finally, a new generation rises up. Joshua leads them in. They begin to uh, 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 spread out, winning battle after battle after battle, beginning to establish the land. Throughout this time, the judges would rule, and it was uh, an interesting, I say ironic time, because one judge would raise up, and the people would repent, and they would win, and they would have freedom. That judge would die, and as soon as he would die, the people would once again go back to sin, go back to their bales and their ashtroths and their their sacred poles and uh, their their fertility hills and, and, you know, all this pagan worship. And then uh, God would allow their enemies to come in, and they would be captive, And then God, they would repent, and God would raise up another judge. And this process continued to take place until the days of Saul. Saul came. The people said they wanted a king, and Samuel, the prophet, anoints Saul to be that king. And Saul begins to establish the the first um, infrastructure in government, establish things like an army, a kingdom. Uh, uh, He begins to establish taxation and all, all of these things. But at some point, Saul, you know, began to look at himself as a bigger person than he ought to. He begins to sin. He begins to mess up and make mistakes. So God says, I'm going to set aside Saul, and I'm going to raise up David. David brings the children of Israel, uh, the kingdom of the Hebrews, into their golden age. And uh, he has a vision to uh, go even further and establish more and establish a temple. But God says, you've got too much blood on your hands. But I will allow your son to do it. His son raises up the temple. Uh, uh, the beauty, the, the, the royalty, but again, the children of Israel are going back and forth and back and forth to the point where God finally, he declares, look, you're going to go into captivity. But keep in mind, like I said at the very beginning of this story, this was not a plan B, C, D, E, or F. God already knew. He, God knew in the days of Adam that all of these things were going to transpire, all of these things were going to take place, and they were a part of his original plan. He did not catch God off guard or by surprise when the children of Israel began to sin. He sent his prophets to declare, because you're doing this, you're going to be taken into captivity. Sure enough, taken into captivity. Then we read some of the most fun and remarkable stories in all of the world. Uh, Individuals like Jeremiah, uh, Ezekiel, Daniel, Daniel in the lion's den, right? Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who refused to kneel and are thrown into the fire. Uh, guys like uh, Ezekiel, where he's seen the wheel within a wheel and the, the, the river that flows from the throne. I mean, just amazing. Isaiah, uh, goodness, like I said, just some of the most remarkable we see. Nehemiah, uh, rebuilding the wall, rebuilding Ezra. Um, guys like Haggai, I mean, just extraordinary, extraordinary things taking place. And that leads us literally in history um, to before the birth of Christ. And we see in this moment in history that God had already made a plan. He was ex- that the, the plan, listen, the plan, <laughs> it's not even that this plan had contingencies. It was, this was the plan. And at that moment in history that God had preordained, Jesus was birthed from the Virgin Mary. He lives this amazing, miraculous, powerful life. He, 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 he lays hands on the sick. They recover. He raises the dead. He cleanses. He washes. He purifies. And all of these extraordinary things take place in Jesus' life. And that brings us in this plan, in this story, to the week we are celebrating this week. I want to go over just some of the points of this week with you because uh, some really great things are taking place. We see, of course, that um, on Palm Sunday... Jesus enters into Jerusalem to shouts of Hosanna, son of David, Hosanna in the highest. These people thinking that he was going to take over as king, that they were liberated, right? And who knew? Well, Jesus knew that a week later, those same people who were declaring Hosanna would a week later be declaring crucify him. We see around Monday or Tuesday, Jesus curses the fig tree. 
He clears out the temple. On Tuesday, Wednesday time frame, uh, we see him challenging the religious leaders, calling them, you whitewashed tombs. You are a bunch of uh, uh, tombs that on the inside you are dead, though on the outside you're clean and you're washed. On the inside you're nothing but dead men's bones. We see that progressing to the point where Jesus has Passover. We talked about this a few minutes ago. He begins to institute things like communion what that will look like, the covenant, giving us the display of his death, his burial, his resurrection, and the celebration of that covenant, what would be provided in that broken body, in that shed blood, and this is the celebration of that thing. From uh, the, the, the Last Supper, we see Jesus a- after supper washing the disciples' feet. They leave from that upper room and go up to the Garden of Gethsemane, and that's where we pick up the story that we just read. There in the Garden of Gethsemane, the, the place of the wine press, uh, where the life is pressed out of you. We see Jesus speaking to the disciples. He says to them, I want you to tarry, I want you to watch, I want you to wait here, and I want you to pray. He goes about a stone's throw away, and we see the Son of God in his anguish, sweating drops of blood. Father, if there's any way for this cup to pass, your will be accomplished. He comes back to the disciples, and they are what? They're a Could you not wait? Could you not watch? Could you not remain uh, alert for at least because of their sorrow? They were fatigued. They were tired, God says. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. And Jesus goes away again and continues to pray. Father, if there's any way for this to pass from me, let it be so, but not my will. Your will be done. Tremendous, extraordinary, excruciating, painful points in the story. One of his dearest friends, the one who would betray him kisses him on the cheek and he's is it with a kiss Judas that you would betray the son of God his disciples you know they're now they're awake right now they're at attention now they're alert and they want to go at these guards these uh, servants of the high priest and they want to make battle one of the disciples looses the sword from takes off the ear of the servant of let it not be so jesus says for if you live by this you will die you will surely die by that sword and and now will you permit me and he touches the man's head and the man's ear is healed just like that instant how moment that must have been right for the servant of the high priest because here you are you're sent on a mission and that mission is to arrest jesus and you're whoa about it we're going to do this we're going to get him but then you get your ear cut off, and Jesus touches you and heals you. How disheartening, disconcerting is that to happen? And yet, here he was. He was arrested, brought before the high priest. We know the story. On trumped-up charges, uh, the Jews carry out execution on their own because they were So they bring him before Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate wants to have nothing to do with it. He washes his hands and says to do with this man as you would understand that all of this, all of this, all of this is bringing us to the point in the plan. Jesus, we know the story. He's crucified. It hangs there. It is finished. Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And for three days he remained in the grave. All of this, part of the purpose. All of this, part of the plan. All of this leading, guiding, directing to a certain point in history. All of it had come to pass, right? But each thing, each item had a point in the story, and each of those points were necessary for the next point to take place. Three days later, Jesus rises. We see then, shortly after that, he begins to show himself to the rest of his disciples, begins to do crazy things like walking through walls. On the road to Emmaus, he he doesn't uh, allow them to see who he is. Their eyes are kind of shielded, but as they begin to speak and talk, they would know later that, that, that Jesus was revealing to them the mysteries of the Word of God, of redemption, of what had to take place, of the prophetic words that had come beforehand. <laughs> right? He's on the beach with the disciples. Well, not with the disciples yet. He, uh, they're, they're out. G- uh, Peter says, I'm going fishing. One of my favorite stories. I, I'm going fishing. They go out and they don't catch anything. They don't recognize Jesus on the beach, but Jesus says, did you catch anything? No, we didn't catch anything. Throw your nets on the right side of the boat. They throw their nets on the right side of the boat, and they had a huge catch once again, the second time Jesus had performed this miracle. They bring their fish to the, store, uh, to the shore. Peter now knows that it's Jesus. He rips off his outer, dives into the ocean, and swims to Jesus. Jesus 
offers him these challenging or do you love me uh, Jesus you know I love you I'm not going to go into that teaching now we we've talked about it a lot at team Cliffdale right here at our tribe do you do you love me Lord you know I love you feed my sheep feed my lambs tend my sheep just Peter had denied three times now he had proclaimed three times Jesus stays with his disciples for 40 days from the time of his resurrection, 10 days out from Pentecost. And as he's about to ascend, he tells his disciples, go into all the world and preach to every living creature. He who believes in his baptized shall be saved and does not will be condemned. And these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will lay hands on the sick or drink deadly thing. It will hurt them. I mean, so on. And so they'll cast out just powerful, powerful. They will walk in my authority. They'll walk in my power. And he says this, he says, but I want you to tarry in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. Keeping in mind, we're only 10 days out from 500 people that saw Jesus raise up into heaven in the upper room on that day of Pentecost. And there they were in Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2. Uh, we see the disciples in that place in one accord, right, in Acts chapter 2. And then the, the, the giving of the Holy Spirit, where God pours out the Holy Spirit Cloven tongues of fire come and sit on each one of them. They begin to speak in unknown tongues. And Peter brings forth a, a great sermon. And 3,000 people in that day come to the Lord. And, and they, 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 they come together regularly as a body. And, and they, 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 they adhere to the teaching of the apostles. And the Word of God says in Acts chapter 2 that, that God added to their number literally daily. And at that point, at that moment, the bride was birthed in partnership with the Holy Spirit. And God continued through history partnering with his bride, partnering with his body to see his kingdom continually being advanced. And for the past 2,000 years, the body, the bride of Christ, has continued to see that kingdom as it, in partnership with the Holy Spirit. We have this opportunity today in partnership with the Holy Spirit to continue to see the advancement of that and that began all those years ago in the garden. That continued on all those years ago at Calvary. That continues on to the plan of God being executed and going forth. Understand that God has chosen us to be a part of that. Selected us. We are that peculiar people. We are that royal priesthood. We are that nation. That, that enter into that place of groaning desire. The, with the Holy Spirit to accomplish the plan of Almighty God. We are Jesus did 2,000 years ago. The truth, I am the life, and we are. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. We can declare that the enemy has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy, but he has come life abundantly my friends we are those who have been afforded the opportunity partnering with the holy spirit to accomplish god's plan in the world today mm. this pandemic didn't catch god by surprise but he will use it as part of his plan i want to give you a couple of very key points right we talk about things like faith. We talk about things like fear. In order to understand this, in order that we might fulfill what I'll say is our destiny, um, what God has predestined for us to do, we must be people of faith rather than fear. Understand that both faith and fear, and we talked about this in the past couple of weeks, and I'm going to briefly, briefly, briefly discuss it with you once again. Understand that, that faith is what we're made of. Faith enables us to accomplish God's will, God's plan in our life. As we step out and act, respond in faith, this causes us to be strong. It causes us to be courageous. There is a, a chain reaction that begins to take place as we respond to the Word of God in faith, as we begin to act upon that Word of God, right? And that chain reaction, as it, as it uh, begins to just file out, as it begins to be accomplished, that faith, it brings a, like a self-confidence. It brings joy. It brings courage. All these things that we were made for it makes us happy because it looks like god and we like to look like our heavenly father fear on the other hand we were not made for fear um we were not made to, to carry the burden of fear 
Understand that when we fear, that that causes us to respond to what we are scared to. Literally, uh, fear is what I'll, I'll say. Just as faith is uh, responding to hope, so fear is responding to what we're scared of. Hebrews says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things that we have not yet seen. I'll, I'm going to make it very basic, very easy, very simple. Basically, faith, right, is responding with an action to what we hope for uh, in accordance with the Word of God. Fear is the action of or responding with the action of being scared, of, 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 of what, 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 what we're scared of. We were not made for that fear. We were not because that fear brings doubt. It brings guilt. It brings all of these burdens. It, we're not made to care. It affects our self-esteem. It affects the way we view ourselves, the way we see ourselves, all of these things. Listen, fear will cause us to remain in our bed, depressed, broken, sad, upset, crying, uh, you know, for a, an indefinite amount of time. That's what fear establishes. And, and we don't like it. It's icky. It's yucky. It's stinky. Why? Because we were not made for fear. We were made for faith. We were made to be people who walk in that faith. And that is what, I mean, that's, that's, it's a good thing. It, it, that's what we're made for. It, 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 again, it affects our confidence, our courage, all of these things. If we, we, we will respond in faith. So how? How do, we, how do we, what I'll say, grow our faith? What things, you, you may ask, during this time of fear, right, and the pandemic, all this stuff, what things, Pastor Josh, can I do in order to cause my faith to grow, in order to cause my faith to expand? Well, number one, first got to get the fear out, right? Uh, if there are things that are bringing fear and doubt and worry and anxiety into your life, listen, if you got to shut off the TV, get off social media, uh, stop watching ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, Fox, doesn't matter. If those things are bringing about on the inside of you a spirit of fear, cut it off. Jesus said, listen, if your hand offends you, cut it off. If your eye offends you, pluck it out. For it's better to go into the kingdom of heaven without that hand than it is for your entire body to be condemned to hell. And I'm a cut it off individual. If that thing, listen, if that thing is cultivating on the inside of you, fear or pride or lust or doubt or anxiety or worry, whatever it is, get rid of it because it's not worth it. How do I establish these principles of faith in my life? Well, once I realize that I got to get rid of some of this garbage, I do that. But this is kind of a, what, I'll, what I'll call a three-part process. We got to read, we got to heed, and we got to deed. Read, heed, deed, Okay. It says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But listen, it's not enough that we simply read. We've also got to take heed. We've got to listen to that. We've got to be attentive. We've got to be aware. Those things that the disciples did not do in the Garden of Gethsemane. They should not have fallen asleep. They should not have allowed the weary of fatigue. I understand it. I have, I have been found asleep on my watch in the past before, but I do not desire I, what I did yesterday, I, yesterday. I don't desire to do today or tomorrow. Those things that fatigued me caused me to worry. Those things that I was not made for, I was not made to operate in. I want to get the garbage out, right, and operate and function in the things that God has planned for me. In order for this to take place, I've got to read. But it's not enough to just read. I've also got to heed. I've got to pay attention to. I got to eat it up, right? I got to enjoy it. I got to be engrossed. I got to uh, uh, just take as much as I can, as much as I can, intentionally, of what God has. In order to be attentive, we've got to be awake. We've got to be alert. We've got to be aware. But it's not enough to read and heed because it's also about the deed. Listen, James 1, 21 through 24 says this. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness, right? We just talked about that. Lay all that stuff aside um, and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. An individual who is not a doer of the word, but a hearer only is an individual who is deceived, thinking that if they are able to hear that word, that is enough. And my friend, it is not. There are so many people in the body of Christ today that think that their knowledge is enough, but being a hearer of the word is not enough. We must be individuals who are doers of the word. 
Let me find my spot. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if, any, if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man, observing his natu- natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself and he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. We must be being individuals, listen, that are not just looking at ourselves in the mirror and we walk away and we forget what we look like. The only way that that happens, the only way that that image is going to be etched in our mind is when we do it. We got to hear it, right? We got to heed it. And we got, I mean, we got to read it. We got to heed it. And we got, we have to deed it. Later on in James, James chapter 2, James says this, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well, but even the demons believe and they tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead. If we are going to be a people who are going to seize God's plan, and and like I said, not just plans, because really there's one plan, and it began in the garden. It continued um, throughout history, throughout the time of Jesus, and still continues. One plan, his plan, that's it. I want to partner with him in that plan. And I realize that if I, in order for me to partner with him in that plan, the way that I partner with him in that plan is through my faith. It is heeding or reading, heeding and deeding. It is hearing. It is not just uh, it's hearkening to and it is doing that word, not being a hearer only, but being a doer. So let's go out there. Let's be doers of the word. Heavenly Father, we love you. God, we bless you today. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that God, our faith would explode. That God, it would grow. And we would see your will, your plan accomplished in our life. Father, we thank you that you have afforded us. You have given us the opportunity to partner with you in your plan. Father, let us get the fear out. Let us get the doubt, the pride, the lust, the garbage, the junk. Let's get it out so that we might be people who would live by faith in this season and accomplish your will in our generation. That is our desire. Father, we thank you that you sent your only son, that this week, 2,000 years ago, God, he was undergoing the process. He was undergoing the plan, the greatest of redemption. Jesus, we thank you for what you purchased at Calvary's cross. We thank you that you sent the Holy Spirit to be our power, our comforter, even in the midst of the storm. So Holy Spirit, we say, let us partner with you to accomplish your will in this time. For this time has come to pass. It won't always be here. The opportunities, the moments won't always be here. So let us take hold of that plan, your plan, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, I want to thank you for joining us. Before I let you go, I want to speak the priestly blessing over you. I say, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause the light of his countenance to shine upon you, that even in the midst of the pestilence and the pandemic, that you would thrive, that no sickness, no disease would come nigh unto you in the name of Jesus, that you would take hold of the opportunities that God affords you this week. It's about all I have. I love you guys, and I will see you later.